September is almost over, and you know what that means. Today I'm going to finally do my wrap-up and ranking of all the books I read in September. Hello everybody, I'm back again to... Like I said in the, at the beginning, I'm going to be talking about all the books I read in September. So I'm going to start off with The Old Man of the Sea. Interest very short. This was actually Hemingway's last published work before he died. Um, it was actually suicide, interest uh, set, which is really sad. But it is it is a great book about adversity, and it has tons of really choice descriptive details that just makes you wish that you that makes you feel like you're actually in the boat with him. In fact, there there is a picture of in in the back of this where it shows. A Cuban fisherman, which is this book is based off of going into the waters and catching a marlin. And it's almost exactly how I imagined it in the book. Hemingway did such a good job describing it. Here he is on the back. But yeah, this is the first book I read in September, and it was a great one. So, yes, 8, eight out of 10. Another one I finished up. The long-awaited sequel, and now one of my favorite authors, Pierce Brown's Lightbringer. I was really excited for this one, and this is a nice addition. I mean, look at the art in this. Come on. You can't really go wrong. Eh, if I can get it open. Like this. Uh, I don't know if you, you can't. You probably can't see it, but... Yeah, I, I should do a better job with that, but this is this is a nice breath of fresh air after the really really dark dark age, which it's still, in my opinion, is still the better book. However, there are some great moments in this book by Sanders, hateable as ever, and of course some great villains. I mean, if this is not a bad book, I'm convinced Pierce Brown has not given us a bad book yet. So, Lightbringer. And some, yeah, there are some, it is a tad bit long, but not as long as Dark Age. Dark Age was really long, really bleak. Here, he kind of eases up off the off the gas pedal a little bit. Gives us some breathing room and gives us some really great character interactions. I don't want to spoil it, but there are three characters that have excellent camaraderie together. So, but if you, and if you've read this book, you know what I'm talking about. No spoilers here at all, so Lightbringer, I'd give it an 8, 8 out of 10. Huh, now the next one I read, this was a new release, like Lightbringer, uh, Season of the Dragon, uh, it was Dragos Premiere, book 1, Season of the Dragon, we follow Quen as, who basically has a shadow it's st I'm still trying to figure it out, but basically she has a shadow soul that inside her that the animals are afraid to go near her. Basically, she's just she's kind of an outcast in her village. Definitely some huge Wheel of Time influences in this book. I mean, I mean her outfit does look Aiel, and if you read Wheel of Time, you know what I'm talking about. So and and it was surprisingly pretty good. The short probably one of the shorter books. Fantasy books I really enjoy. Um, I'll probably talk about this more, and, and I'm gonna definitely be following this, this author and her and her other books. So, yeah, I'm gonna give this eight out of ten. It's really good. World building's great. Characters is pretty fun. Pacing's nice and smooth. It doesn't, you know, it, it doesn't. It, it flows. It flows. If you know, and it's like I said, it's not too long. There are some tropes in here, but personally, that didn't bother me. I really enjoyed this book. It's exciting to get, and actually, this is actually my first signed edition. So, yep, my first signed edition by an author. I got it at Barnes Noble. Met the author herself. She seems really nice. She seems really enthusiastic for books. So, yeah, I'm a, I was a big fan of this, and I can't wait to read more of her. So, then I finally, in September, I also finished The Dark Tower. Um, I, lo I liked Song of Susanna. It was 
short and weird, but I, I didn't mind it. It was, it worked for the story. This, the first half's pretty good, but then it starts to kind of slow down. And I think some of the problems are the decisions made in this book. Some, some things that have been like hyped up and hyped up and alluded to in other books are pretty, they get a very lackluster resolution, let's say, which is a little disappointing. And the ending, well, yeah, I was, and if you know what, if you read this book, you know what I'm talking about. Not quite the ending I was ex hoping for or expecting, but it's not all terrible. There's some good moments, but towards the end, King was definitely phoning it in. So, 7 out of 10 here. I mean, and some pros. Yeah, Roland, excellent character. Excellent character growth here. I mean, the character work for Roland is masterful. So, yeah, 7 out of 10, though. Finally, I read Huckleberry Finn. It took me a while to read it. I actually put it down at one point because... Personally, the language used in this book is not what we would use today, especially a lot of uses of the N-word, and some of the slang was a little bit hard to get through, but I managed to push through. Not as good as Tom Sawyer, in my opinion, but still, there's still some important themes in this book. Of course, like the, there's definitely a lot of commentary on rape, the, on slavery and Mark Twain's condemnation condemnation towards it so I really appreciate it I'll give it a 8 out of 10 as well to be generous well that was all the books I read in September October it should be very interesting I'm trying I got a big pile of books I'm trying to get through for October including needful things I'm rereading it and I'll be reading a couple of shorter books as well like misery and Pet Cemetery. Anyways, thanks for listening, watching, sorry, and I'll see you next time.